Hi, I'm Mike Strauss, owner and trainer of Turboprop Engine Training, LLC. This video is a summary of the NTS torque load arm testing that I recently completed. Here is a view of the nose case area on a TP331 string gauge engine configuration. Here you see the first torque load arm assembly. This is the second torque load arm. Here is the NTS valve, followed by the third torque load arm assembly. On the left is a picture of the torque load arm assembly with the cover removed. Here is the quill shaft and this is the lock ring that position and locks the quill shaft in a preloaded or torqued condition. On the left you see a torque load arm drawing. In the center the blue quill shaft is twisted or preloaded at 100 inch pounds of torque with a torque wrench. The dark gray lock ring was then moved in a clockwise direction one spline at a time until it engaged into a free spline which was the first free spline while the quill shaft is preloaded to 100 inch pounds. It turns out the first free spline is the worst free spline of the four consecutive available free splines in the torque load arm assembly. Note, in the first free spline, when the torque wrench load is removed, the quill shaft is free to untwist in a counterclockwise direction, which will reduce the torque down to about 70 inch pounds total. On the right, you see a torque load arm drawing. In the center, the blue quill shaft is twisted or preloaded at 100 inch pounds of torque. Uh, using a torque wrench. The dark gray lock ring has been moved in a clockwise direction one spine at a time counting the free splines and continuing until it will no longer engage then backing up counterclockwise one spline and engaging into the last and best free spline. The last free spline in this example the fourth spline is the only spline that will maintain the quill shaft torque close to 100 inch pounds of torque after removing the torque wrench load. After each load arm is initially adjusted, a recheck of the load on each load arm one at a time is required. I would like to suggest a slightly different technique to better define where each load arm torque is set as follows. Apply uh, 100 inch pounds or slightly more of clockwise torque to the first load arm quill shaft and pull the lock ring forward out of the housing about 1 eighth of an inch. Then relax the torque applied. Lightly load the lock ring aft with two fingers of your left hand while you slowly apply torque, wrench torque with the right hand as you read the torque wrench value. Record the torque value when the lock ring releases and slides aft one eighth of an inch. Repeat two or three times as required to confirm that the lock ring release torque indication repeats to determine the final load arm torque setting on that first load arm. Perform the same procedure on the two remaining load arms. The tolerance is 100 plus or minus 10 inch pounds on each load arm. Note 300 inch pounds plus or minus pounds total for all three load arms combined. I noticed on the unit I tested that one spline clockwise will increase the load arm torque about 10 inch pounds. To make the minimum 10 inch pound increasing adjustment, you will need to apply an extra. 10 to 20 inch pounds above the existing load arm torque to free up the lock ring and to reinstall the lock ring one spline clockwise. 
After the above adjustment, repeat the quill torque recheck using the technique described on the previous slide. Now that the load arms are set and the NTS valve is adjusted to the two turn clockwise position per the maintenance manual, the next check is to perform the prop blade 30 inch station weight pull trip test and it should trip at 57 pounds of weight. In this example, it trips 3 pounds low at 54 pounds which will require a load arm torque adjustment. A clockwise adjustment of one spline on one load arm will increase the torque about 10 inch pounds which will increase the trip test weight by about 2 pounds. So it should retest at about 56 pounds after this adjustment which would be within limits. Tweaking the NTS valve rather than the load arm, even though it may be easier, faster, and a very precise way to tweak the trip torque, however, it is probably not a good way to go because I don't believe it has been adequately tested. As a result, you have no limits provided on how much it can be tweaked. I feel like it could easily be adjusted to a point right on the edge of the serviceability where it could still pass the ground check but might not work in flight. In flight, the dimensional changes and the oil viscosity changes that occur when the engine and the oil temperature have increased into the normal temperature range could possibly shift the NTS system calibration slightly. That might in some cases result in a system being forced to fall off the serviceability cliff or over the edge with the system becoming inoperative in flight. If you have any questions or comments regarding this video, you can reach me at my website, www.tpetraining.com, or my email address, mike at tpetraining.com, or my phone number, which is 417. 499-9152. The end. Thank you.